So in recent years, the Universal Serial Bus has made a huge jump in performance and speed. However, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering whether or not the latest and greatest in this humble port is really worth investing in or not. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Andrew, and today I will be bringing you my two cents on USB 3.1. Now before I get started in this video, I just want to say that I am by no means an expert in the field of USB 3.1 or any other USB class for that matter. But just recently I did acquire a USB 3.1 compatible computer, which has caused me to ask this question of myself several times. But I can tell you that from the research I've done as well as the experience that I've had with the port has really led me to a pretty decent conclusion on not only how it works, but also whether or not, in my opinion, it's worth it. Now before we get started, it's worth noting that there are two very different lines of USB that are worth going over first. So one series is abbreviated by a number, such as 2.0, 3.0, 3.1, and the other series is abbreviated by a letter, which, as of right now, there is A, B, and of course, Type-C. So the format that you are most likely used to is a Type-A USB connector. So this is a big, blocky connector that's mostly used in things like thumb drives, external hard drives, or many different forms of external media. So the Type-A variation can be paired with any of the version numbers such as 2.0, 3.0, or 3.1, which makes it a Type-A 3.0 or 3.1 connector. Now where it gets more complex is right there adding that different version letter. So just for example, a USB 3.1 type B connector would bring you all the benefits and perks of USB 3.1 such as the architecture and speed, but would also bring you the compatibility and ease of a type B connector. Now just by taking a look at the port, it's nearly impossible to determine any difference between 3.1 as well as its older counterparts. The only truly distinguishing factor between them is of course the indigo wrapping that is around the inside of the port, varying just slightly from the blue that was integrated into USB 3.0. Now of course, as you would expect, the same outward design comes with backwards compatibility, which is nothing new, however if you do get a hold of a USB 3.1 enabled device, then I'm sorry to say, but it still only goes in one way. However, it's not in appearance, but in performance where this port really shines. So in terms of raw speed, it is nearly double what the original USB 3.0 was and is now jacked all the way up to 10 gigabits per second. Now the USB power delivery has also received quite an upgrade as well, which is now capable of outputting at least 100 watts. Now because of the great transfer rate as well as phenomenal power delivery, a 3.1 connector paired with a Type-C would theoretically be able to charge a laptop right from the back of a computer. Now in addition it would theoretically be able to handle data transfer rates at the caliber of HDMI as well as DisplayPort, which basically goes towards lessening the amount of cables on your desk. So what does all this mean? But more importantly, who's this port really for? Well, just looking at raw specs and benchmarks, you'd think we're looking at the next generation of connectors, which we might very well be. Now, taking into consideration the possibilities of a connector so strong, so powerful, and so fast would really assume that this connector would creep into every device sooner or later. However, for the time being, although this port really is something special in the world of tech, I can really only recommend it to a media enthusiast or professional who really needs the best of the best when it comes to external transfer. However, this port really does have something going for it. And who knows, maybe five of your future devices will be connected all by one plug. Well, that's all for this video. If you like this content, check out some of my others. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. But anyway, guys, my name is Andrew, and until next time, thank you for watching.